Hello and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Uh, this one we're going to get into the weeds a little bit because I wanted to talk about casting and casting nodes. So if we were to open up our third person character, especially with, uh, for example, multiplayer games, we may want our player pawn to interact with the player controller. And the way that we might do that is if I go to event, begin play. So this will run just when when the game starts, when we're, when we're getting kicked off. And then if I wanted to get the player controller, I could right click, get the player controller, and this will return whichever controller is, um, you know, controlling this point. Well, actually the one that we'll use is get controller. Because this is often a better one to use because it's the controller of this actor, which is the player point, the third person character. And then from here, we would cast to the third person player controller, because that's the one that we can see here in our game mode, or in the game mode actor. And this casting node, uh, while it's perfectly fine, perfectly usable for uh, prototyping and that kind of thing, especially if you're just starting out with a new, a new mechanic or a new function, if we were to, let me just save that, come over here to our third person character and right click it, go to our reference viewer. So this shows us all of the different assets that are being referenced by our main pawn. So this is worth keeping in mind because if you're wanting to make, for example, a plugin or um, or you're making a game that has several different pawns, like if you had a, a walking pawn and also a, like a driving a car pawn, you're going to want to use uh, the same controller but with different pawns and you don't want to have to carry around the reference to the player controller. You want to be able to, say if you were changing the engine, the engine version, for example, to just basically package out the plugin with your uh, with your playable characters in it and just have it work in a new project without having to drag across all these other references. You can see this if we go to asset actions here and then migrate, uh, save, see, it's uh, got our third person character here and all the other, the other things that it's dependent on, which we saw in that reference viewer, but the player controller is not one of them, neither is the game mode or uh, any of these other pawns here. It's not included in the pawns reference. And this is good, and we want to protect that, because if we wanted to swap out this pawn for something else, or update it to a different version, as I said, we want to um, we want to make sure that we're not building up a lot of useless references. And it's also going to drive up our loading times and uh, just slow things down in general. So we want to avoid that. And the way that we can do that is with interfaces. Now, I've spoken about interfaces in the past. Uh, I thought it'd be worth touching again, because we can see um, so we've learned, we've learned a little bit over the over the years, and we can see some of the advantages in using one. So I'm going to make a new interface. Let's call it casting underscore int for interface, and open it up, and we'll have a look at our interfaces here. So we have a new function by default. I'm just going to right click this. We'll rename. We'll call it get PC for the player controller, and we'll go retroactively as well. I'll make another one called get uh, PP for player pawn. So in our PC here. Uh, well, this function here is read-only. We don't affect our interface here. What we do is we make the function, we give it inputs and outputs, and then we can call on those functions in our actors in order to execute different functionality. In this case, what we want to do is just go outputs and get uh, our player controller. Let's type in player controller, and now we don't want to actually get the specific actor. We just want to get the actor type, which is a player controller and the object reference. So this is the generic player controller, not the actual player controller actor that's attached to our game mode. Likewise, with our uh, player pawn here, we'll go outputs. This will be player pawn, or perhaps it's just, yep, uh, pawn. And we'll call it player pawn. Very sensible, intuitive naming. Then save. And then back in our character, uh, what we need to do is go over to, I think it's class settings, and implement our interface, which we've just made the casting int. So compile and save. And we'll see here, this little drop down has appeared on the site. So we'll pull that down, and we have our get PC function. So here, if we double click this, we can see that that's the function that we just made just there, but now we can actually edit it. We can actually add nodes here uh, to use. And what we want to do is find our player controller actor, click this little folder here next to our player controller class, should just be here in our content third person blueprints, open it up. And like we did with the player character actor, we want to implement our 
casting, interface, compile, and save. And now we'll open up our get PC. So play controller, get PC function, at or into this play controller output, get a reference to self. So whenever anything calls this function on this controller, we're going to output itself. We're going to output its player controller. So in our player pawn, what that looks like is if we come out of our get controller here and find the get PC messenger function. So this is the little envelope here. It's a messenger function. So we can access our casting functions pretty much from anywhere. Um, and we're just assuming that uh, our controller is utilizing this interface. If it doesn't, it's not going to fire. It will just do nothing, as you can see. If the target doesn't implement it, then it'll just do nothing, no error or anything. It'll just skip right over it. And then out of this player controller, we can promote this to a variable. This is our player controller. And now we have a reference to our player controller captured at begin play. Likewise, we might want the player controller to get a reference to the player pawn. So in our character, we'll go to the get PP function, just like we did with the controller, get a reference to the self, compile and save. And then in the controller, from our begin play, we'll pull this across, find a get player pawn. And the get player pawn is going to use this messenger function, get PP. Make sure this hooks up to our existing code. I think this is for yeah, initializing input. And then we'll promote this to a variable, the player pawn. All right, make sure that's connected. So what can we do with this? Well, now we don't need to use a casting node. In fact, we can keep using our interface to do many, many different things. Like, uh, let's add a new function. Uh, let's call this, say, pass text. And we're not going to add any inputs or outputs. We're going to leave it like this with just this, uh, just this um, output node here, because then we can use it as an event in our uh, actors. So if we go to our event graph here in the third person character, we can have a look at what that looks like. So if we right click our, our graph here and we'll type in pass text, that's the event that we just made, we can see there are a few. So we have the event on the um, the actual class. We're not going to be using this one. So we'll print this over it. <coughs> you very rarely will. We have the function. So we can call it as a function that'll pass through. That'll basically be like if I made a custom event and then called that event elsewhere. That's what we're looking at here, this blue node. In fact, I'll show you an example. So if we go to custom events, uh, I'll just call this the test event, and then test event. See, that's what we're looking at here, is this sort of relationship here, because the other, the other node is the event, the event pass text. And we can see that it's an interface event, given our little interface icon at the top there. But anything that we fire off here is going to be executed when any other actor calls this pass text event on our player pawn. So if I go and say print string, we'll just use print strings just to be simple. And I'll say, this is the player pawn. Get rid of these test events. We don't need them. And I don't need that either. We'll just keep this uh, little event here and compile. Because if we go over to our controller now and say, we'll use event tick. So the event tick will just run every frame uh, just for the sake of our testing here. If I control and drag our player pawn and then pass text the messenger function. So I'm just going to execute this event on our player pawn. So we'll compile that, save, hit play. This is the player pawn. I made a little typo there. Doesn't matter. You can see that the event is working perfectly fine because it's being called on our uh, player character here from the controller. No casting nodes required. This is an extremely cool thing. It's going to save you a lot of overhead and it's just a, a great alternative to using casting nodes. You'll also find that like failure to cast as well won't be as much of a problem um, because you know, it doesn't necessarily matter which actor um, you're referencing, you know, pawn or controller, as long as it implements the interface and you have your functionality attached to it with your, um, with your events. You can see here too, the different color, the yellow one is an event. Obviously the gray one is a corresponding function. And you know, you can tell the difference because for example, our event here doesn't have the second node, but get PP and get PC both do because they have, um, have an output, they have an input and a, and a return node. So they're a function and you don't call them like a, an event. The event is more of a sort of fire and forget kind of thing. In fact, we could do this the other way around as well. So if I will say, Pass into the controller. 
and give it a little, uh, little dot dot dot. And then grab our player controller and do the same thing. So pass text. Same little messenger function here, but this time pointing to our to our player controller. Of course, this isn't actually an event on the controller, so if I double click this, it takes us to our interface. But in the controller here, we get our pass text event and a print string. And we say this is the controller. Compile and save. Then when we hit play, <laughs> We can see both of the lines there. So just to illustrate the beauty of this in a slightly different way, I'm going to file and save all over in our world settings. Let's change our default pawn to the first person character and hit play. So here we have the first person character. Everything's the same in the world. It's the same one I used for the AO video that I released um, last week. But now we're using the first person character. So if I find the first person character and we'll open it up, but first we'll check its references should be about the same. Yep, as we can see, it's being referenced by its game mode. And we have the same kind of thing as the skeletal mesh, the, you know, all the rig, the physics inputs. Uh, it's got its own touch interface and another another UI. That'd be for the twin thumbstick um, template. But no player controller. We don't need one. Instead, what we will do is find our first person character, go to the class settings, implement our interface, our casting interface, compile and save. And now I go event tick and we'll get the pin play. Oh, actually, we can short circuit this a little bit. We don't even need that. We can just go get controller. And then from the control, target is pawn. Return the controller for this actor. So let's get controller. Target is pawn. Is that the same node? Yep, uh, target is born. That is the same note. My mistake. Brain fart. And then we'll get our pass text. So this is going to execute this event on the player controller. Compile and save. Hit play. And this is the controller. Look at that. Excellent. All right. So um, I think that uh, that proves my point. <laughs> Gets the message across. Not a single casting node. And we have all these different relationships between controller and player porn. So um, I know it's a bit more of a sort of technical, theoretical kind of video, but this is important information, especially if you want to, you know, be making very high efficiency, um, you know, like multiplayer games and that kind of thing. So thank you for watching this far. I hope you learned something. Please uh, drop your requests, drop your feedback in the comments below, like the video on your way out. The easiest way to get in touch with me, as always, is on Discord. There will be links in the description and I'll catch you in the next one.